to catch a wild dog, you have to think like one, even speak its language. The whole idea is actually to go out, I suppose in a sense make a public announcement that you're another dog in their area and get them to come over. So why does professional howler and trapper Tony Townsend want to call in a wild dog? So it can be trapped and killed. Wild dogs are dingoes and domestic animals that have gone feral and bred with their native counterpart. A dog exclusion fence was built way back in the 1880s. It stretches from Queensland's Darling Downs to South Australia's Great Australian Bight. And while it largely kept wild dogs to the north, out of the southern farming country, lack of maintenance has meant wild dogs have trickled through into the protected zone. They've been creating havoc for years, especially for sheep producers in central Queensland. I remember Camo coming home and yeah, he said, we've got a dog here and that just makes your blood run cold. There's lots of anecdotal evidence that you know, one or two dogs can kill 50 or 60 sheep in a night. But we're trying to fight this dog problem and we can't see it. Well, I've got the chainsaw in the back, I've got the ammo, I think, and gun, um, and I've got poison, so let's go farming. A million miles from the sunburnt plains of outback Queensland, in the Victorian high country, Robert Belcher has long campaigned for action on wild dogs. I suppose I'm probably ending up at that numb state where I don't know which way to turn. I know they've been taking lambs flat out. I can't catch the dog. I can't fence them in somewhere where they're safe. I spend as much time as I can being disruptive to a predator. Um, I don't know what to do. Certainly having seen firsthand people who literally come in from the paddock having just dealt with a dog attack, they are the most stressed people I've ever seen. At the turn of the 20th century, many shearing sheds particularly in central Queensland, was silenced. Low wool prices, drought and wild dog attacks forced sheep producers to look for easier ways to make a living. If the dogs stay the way they are, I think that uh, it'd be uneconomical for us to run sheep. The demise of the sheep industry, they say, is because of the wild dogs. Well, the price of wool has influenced it but the straw that's breaking the back is the wild dogs. Some farmers turned to cattle, but young calves also proved no match for the vicious predators. And some of the calves, had, you know, I reckon they'd only been born a few hours when they were killed, you know, like it was, they just didn't have a chance, you know. Not with six dogs in a pack, you know, it's, it's yeah, that's when they do the damage. It was just night after night. It was very distressing. We felt terribly guilty, like we could have done more. There have been many and varied attempts to keep wild dog numbers under control, by people like Don Salway, for instance. He's a dogger who traps and shoots in outback Queensland. If you're putting traps and that in, you want them in the right spot. So you do, you do a lot of research, I might ride for three days before I find the right area. Intuition honed over more than 20 years draws him to this fallen log. One by one, he drags six-week-old pups from the safety and comfort of their den. He'll use them as bait to draw in their parents, and then they'll be destroyed, because as cute as they are now, it's just a matter of time before they develop their own killer instincts. The bait does the trick. The adult dog is caught in one of Don's traps. Each carcass fetches a bounty of up to $500, paid for by landholders and local government. I make 11, but I work out it. I'm seven days a week, all year round. 
There are so few professional doggers left that many property owners have taken things into their own hands. Tony Hoff has taught himself how to trap. I've got the paper on there, we just fill in around the wings, press them down tight so that they're good and firm. If a dog steps on it and feels that steel under it, he'll disappear real quick. Got ourselves a little bitch here, John. Caught her by the back leg, so we're pretty lucky. Drop that tailgate, mate. While some of these dogs look like dingoes, DNA testing shows there are very few purebred native dogs left. They're almost all hybrids. John, but just clean up a bit of that blood here, John. Other landholders, unable or not wanting to trap and kill dogs themselves, have literally brought in the big guns. You have to be a reasonable shot, and it's important because if you're going to come out and, and start shooting animals, the least you can do is be humane about it. You don't want to start winging animals and then sending them back into the bush to die slowly. In 2014, Queensland trialled getting volunteer sharpshooters onto farms. If you'll see these tracks going towards the farmhouse. Called Farmer Assist, the program has now spread to other states and it's free for the landholder. I got into this in order to help out um, the farmers. Volunteer shooters, while helpful, work infrequently and they haven't been the complete answer either. For the past five years, farmers in Queensland have been turning back to an old solution. The insidious nature of them continuing to disperse from where, they, where they're quite thick in numbers and turning up in our, in our part of the world is, um, is such that the only solution are these fences here. It was either fence or cell as far as we were concerned. This is called cluster fencing. Groups of graziers have joined forces to construct dog-proof enclosures surrounding several properties. It works on the notion, if you can't kill them, then exclude them. This is the apron, it's about 300 mil, which mm -hmm. um, the animals uh, we try to keep out. Uh, we put that on the dirty, what we call the dirty side. Mm -hmm. um, so a bit of luck, he'll stand on that before he start to try and dig a hole. Much of the area from Blackhall to Longreach has been fenced. Tens of thousands of hectares are now behind wire, and some district councils have helped with the considerable cost. New technology is making a difference too. Dogs detected by motion camera are deterred with sirens. Some landholders employ surveillance that remotely warns them when a dog has breached the barrier. And nighttime drone photography captures images of predators inside the fence so they can be shot or fed 1080 baits. The fencing strategy is working. They do stop dogs and the people that are building the fences are reporting great success. Since we've finished our fence, we've gone, our mortality is well and truly more than halved. Um, you know, we're back in single figures and our lambing's more well and truly more than doubled. This is the first positive thing we've been able to do probably since the 50s to put it to, to make ourselves more viable. My husband actually has a full night's sleep now, uh, which was something he didn't really get for about three or four years. And now it has given us not only control of our stock, but also given us back a normal life as well and time. High wool prices, a little bit of rain and lower risk of wild dog attacks mean sheep are moving back to the brilliant wool growing country of central Queensland. But almost entirely to the places that are behind wire. <laughs> 